Hey, what's up? This is Donna St. Louis here, and I am at the Rock Morris Stages Boot Camp. And today is our travel day. And just in case you're wondering, we actually host Rockmore Stages here. Not a hotel. In a 13,000 square foot mansion. That's how we roll. Because part of it is about your mindset. It's not just about getting in a stuffy hotel and being all, uh, you know. It's really about getting out and and connecting with people and, and being different and, and game changing and authentic and vulnerable and real and, and awesome and connecting with people in a real way. It's all of that. So anyway, I'm here tonight. I'm at the mansion and the mansion is absolutely gorgeous. It is 13,000 square feet. It is 12 unique bedrooms, all with their own private bathroom. And let me show you around for a little bit. And then after I show you around, I'm going to tell you about the time that I bombed my big bomb on stage. And it was, it was not good. It was so not good. And I got my glasses on tonight. So if you have something to say, I'll actually be able to read it. That's not always the case with me. So just take a look behind me. This is our house. So this is our living room area. And as you can see, we already have people here. And we're starting. So today is just a travel day. We actually get into it tomorrow. We just finished up our mastery program and our mastermind for our people who've already graduated and done amazing things. And now we're getting ready to start our boot camp for people who want to get started in the right way. They're, maybe they're already speaking, but they want to get it to the next level. We just had... We just had dinner. As you can see, it's almost all, almost, almost all gone. We had a great dinner. We have a celebrity chef that cooks for us. Her name is Chef Tia. Um, and so we have people here. They're already getting started. Uh, this is where we are tonight. Right? And that's just a few people. We're still waiting, waiting for people to come in. Today is an amazing travel day. So everybody's trying to get here as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to walk you around the house. That's our outdoor pool area. One of our many areas. The house is absolutely gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> I've been here since the 15th. I'll be here until the 23rd. After that, I'm heading up to Seattle because um, I just inked a huge deal with Microsoft. So I'll be up in Seattle for a few, for about a week or so. Then I'll be back down and... We're talking about some other stuff that I'll be doing with Microsoft. I'm pretty excited about that. Here, let me show you the game room. So I got to tell you, we spent a lot of time hanging out in the game room playing video games at night. You know, because you got to get it in. You got to have fun, right? And so what happens is I'm going to share with you guys the time that I bombed, but we just wanted to show you the house that we're hanging in. And actually, when I get upstairs, because people are down here talking, when I get upstairs, I'll talk to you about what do you do? How do you know? You know, when you're, what, first of all, how did I bomb on stage? And I bombed. Or at least I felt like I bombed. And then, what do you do? How do you ensure that you don't do that? Because it taught me a very valuable lesson, and I'm going to share that with you. Here is our upstairs living room, or billiard room, I should say. And then we have a wing over there that has several rooms. I think there's eight or nine rooms over there. And then we're here. So we actually get everything started here in the morning in our media room. What's up, Lisa? How are you doing, baby? Fam is in the house. What's going on? So good to see you. So it's been a busy, crazy, awesome days. Major breakthroughs. Let me see. I got light out here. I'm going to go out on the porch. 
don't have a light. <laughs> Let me turn on the lights. Here we go. All right. So check this out. Overlooking the pool. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna actually take a seat. We have outdoor area for chilling. So um, I was giving this speech, right? And it was a big motivational speech and I really wanted to kill it. I mean, I wanted to crush it, right? And so I do all the things you're supposed to do when you want to crush your speech. You go online, you start looking at other speakers, you get yourself really hyped up and motivated. I did all of those things. That's what you're supposed to do. And um, as I was watching this, I started paying attention. Hey, Rudy. Rudy's in the house. Um, I started paying attention to like, Tony Robbins and how he delivers, you know, and that big power and that big voice and that big presence, you know, and, and I just kept watching like Eric Thomas and Les Brown. And so I'm watching these big power motivational speakers, you know, these guys that give you that giant motivational hug and, you know, you feel like, yeah, I can do every anything. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a speech just like that. So I go to this conference and I give an amazing speech. And then I get, and, I, and by the way, I'm watching them because I don't want to change my whole speech. I just want to nail the last 10 minutes. I want to make the last 10 minutes of this 60 minute speech fire, fire. And so, so I go there and, um, oh, and I watch some of the, like I watch the movie Rudy I watch a couple of other movies that have like these great locker room conversations. And I mean, I'm ready to deliver fire on the platform. And I go on the platform, deliver 50 minutes of just gold. People are clapping. They're laughing. They're, call, they're, they're talking back to me. Just the whole thing. Like everything's going great. And then I decide now is the time. I am going to channel my inner Tony Robbins. I am going to bring it. I am going to end with like this big, booming, motivational hug and all this stuff. And, you know, you are unleash your power within because you are great. And let me tell you, at the end of that 10 minutes, not kidding you, the audience was completely quiet. And then after a few seconds, there is this guy all the way in the back corner. Thousand people in the audience. This dude is all the way in the back corner. And he does the worst thing a speaker could ever hear. The slow clap. Now, it wasn't one of those slow claps like, oh, a slow clap that's going to have this great crescendo. No, no, no. It was a slow, I feel sorry for her. She just did a speech, we should do something, kind of clap. And to make matters worse, other people clapped with him, mainly because they felt sorry for him that he was clapping along, alone and not for me. And it was horrible. I tried to disappear into the stage. The worst part was this old lady. I mean, she was like a really old lady. She walked up to me and it was like she wanted to be my grandma and make everything okay. And she's like, that's okay, baby. You just started. You'll get better. I was like, oh my God, I've been doing this for years. Like, it was so embarrassing, right? But it also taught me a great lesson. And I know you're going to say, oh, Donna, the lesson's in authenticity. No, because I authentically thought that I was a big motivational hug type speaker. Sorry about that, guys. I honestly thought that's what I was. I thought I was this big motivational hug type of speaker. And this is what I learned. And this is something that we talked about during the week here at the mansion with, with High Profit Zone family members. Is that there's two types, two styles of speaking that are really on the opposite end of the border, right? 
You have your intrinsic, and I'm talking about motivational keynote speeches. You have your intrinsic motivational speech, and you have your, on the other side, your extrinsic motivational speaker. So you have your intrinsic and your extrinsic. And so the difference is this. An extrinsic motivational speaker, the one all the way on the, you know, if the pendulum goes like this, the one on this side, the extrinsic motivational speaker is the, the speaker who gives you the big external cheerleading motivational hug. They'll say things like, you can do it. All you have to do is believe in yourself. You're amazing. You can knock it out the park every day, twice on Sunday, right? They say words like that, right? And they're like, yes, and yes, you can, and keep up alive, and, you know, just all the things that make you feel good. You feel so good. You leave there like amazing feeling, like you can do anything. I am not that speaker. I am an intrinsic motivational speaker. So I am the opposite. I am your inner, quote unquote, not even cheerleader. It's more of the person that goes, of course you can. No shit. In fact, what I'm really wondering is how you're not doing it right now. You're already a badass. You already have this amazing future is waiting for you to get off your lazy ass and get there. Like you want all this, this, and this, but then you don't want to do that, that, and that. So if you don't really want this because you're not willing to do that, it's not about being fearless, it's about having courage. So I am more provoking your inner power and telling you to reach inside and use it. I'm not giving you the external motivational hug, I'm more like giving you the external motivational ass kicking, right? But you have to know which one you are because if you get, and, and, and you could be like somewhere on the pendulum, you might not be all the way over here or all the way over here, but when you know who you are, you won't make the mistake of watching the wrong people or, or getting formulas from people and trying to duplicate their style that it's not really you. And I had to, I mean, I really had to learn that about me. I had to learn that about my style. And so that's the same thing for you. Which style are you? Are you the big motivational hug? Or are you, let me put my boot to your ass and let you know that you need to do. Like, there is no excuse for you not to be successful. Know which one you are. I'm definitely the provocateur. I'm definitely more of the ass kicker than the motivational hugger because I, the difference is I do believe in you so much that at this point I'm like, there are no excuses. Period. The end. So yes, that is so me. That is so me all the time, Lisa. I know I'm working on it. Um, Yes, we had the mansion. I see you wrote, love the mansion. You're working your magic. Everyone is so pumped and so many already out, world changing. Yes. Let me tell you, we had people that come to this and they leave changed. And I get people who are looking for, you know, they'll say, well, what's the agenda? And and what's going to happen? And give me the details. You know what? Quite honestly... It's like going to a Tony Robbins thing and walking out changed, but I'm not giving you the big motivational hug. It it is like that. You do walk out changed. You just walk out changed because you now know that everything that you have to be absolutely freaking successful is already inside you and you just got to get off your ass and stop being afraid and stop being inauthentic and get your stuff done. And yes, Elizabeth is literally, she was right down there. Is she behind me No. Okay. Um, she was right down by the pool. So it, it really is one of those things of, um, Elizabeth, you should come up. So it is one of those things where it, it, it is not the big motivational hug of, yes, you can. You know, if you're looking for that, you got to go somewhere else. Right. You can't, right? It's, somebody asked me to describe it. And quite honestly, it's so hard because there are people that walk in here that 
they look at me and they're like, I don't even know why I'm crying. Like, why am I crying? But it's not sad tears. There's this relief of pressure. They're like, I walked in here and I was just me. And win, lose, or draw, I was just me. And it was a safe place to take a big risk. And that's one of the things I'll say. It's a super safe place to take a big risk. And we help you remove that armor of, you know, of, of bullshit, quite honestly, right? Hey, come sit next to me. Hey! <laughs> um, so one of the things we were, one of the things I was saying was um, the armor of bullshit. Yeah, I didn't have that problem. So. Uh, yeah, you didn't. You didn't. But Terrible. No. <laughs> yeah, not at all. No armor. Um, no, but so I want you to think about this. And this is one of the things we talked about. There are two people that go into battle. One person goes in the battle and they're fully armored up, head to toe. They got all their stuff. They're shiny. Oh, like they're shiny. Like they got that shit shined up the night before, right? It's like perfect, shiny, everything's great. And then you have this other person that goes in the battle and they're naked. Which one of those two people are more courageous? <laughs> probably the probably the naked one. The naked also, one. Also, might be on LSD. Right. But <laughs> the, the thing that you said the one night, and I think I post. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. The thing that uh, you said the one night, and I posted on Facebook, was that uh, you have to be vulnerable enough to let us in because yes. we're not here to hurt you. That's right. So you're, you're using a battle analogy, and yet in this, this armor is stopping you from getting what you need. Exactly, because here we make it crystal clear that. We, you don't need the armor is kind of our point. Like you are get, like, I know all these people, they're like, I got to have this and I got to have that and I can't let them see this. And I got, and it's all this stuff and it's all this bullshit see, that they're covering themselves So the with. thing with Tony, like a Tony Robbins type thing, right? Mm -hmm. So he'll go in, he'll grab everybody like a big ball and he'll throw them through a process and everybody comes out the end. Donna is like, I'm going to break you this way. I'm going to break you that way. I'm going to break you that way. And she, each person gets their transformation, but they get the transformation they need right. on the time that they're ready for it, their time frame. I broke right away. I was, I was broken and, in 24 hours. And like, wait, but you got your breakthrough, and it was so funny because we talked about this ahead of time. And I said, I just want you to know that people cry, and a lot of times it's because there is a release. And she goes, oh, like what, just like just the women? Because I'm not going to cry. And I'm like, no, the men too. And she goes, what are they crying about? And I'm like, there's a release. And she goes, I'm fine. I don't need that. I was like, okay, sweetie. I was like, all right. You're right. You don't need it. You're good. Yeah. You're good. No, no. You're good. No, it's a mess. And then she was like, okay, what happened? I'm like, no, I told my husband, I was like, well, I gave my presentation less than 24 hours. And I'm like, I kind of cried in front of everyone. It was like, oh, I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. Two other dudes did too. So it's yeah. okay. <laughs> like everyone did. Because there is this part. So I can't share this part. There is this thing that we do on the first day. And this is what makes this so different is that a lot of people are like, I'm going to talk about leadership. Let's use that one. I'm going to talk about leadership. And I'm like, okay. But there's this thing that you do on the very first day, and I go, I don't want you to just tell me that you talk about leadership. I want you to explain to me, yeah, no mascara at the mansion. I want you to explain to me why you talk about leadership and why it's so important to you and the personal story from deep inside of you that is your catalyst that made you think that you were the expert to talk about this. <clears throat> And when people, and let me tell you something, oh my God, when you dig deep and it's true, mm -hmm. and it's true that you're, you, you present your true self and you've only met these people for 24 hours, less than 24, less than 24 hours. hours, when you present your true self, you're fine. But when you present something that is not a hundred percent like I mean, it, vulnerable uh, with vulnerability mm -hmm. and true. I'm not saying it. What my part wasn't true. I'm just saying uh, there's my story. So let's skip. Let's that skip over it. Let's skip over it. Let's not talk about it. Let's just keep going. We don't and, have to talk about it. And then she's like, "Cause it," and, and she kept going, "But it speaks for itself." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And she and she was like, "Yeah," and that speaks for itself. And that speaks for itself. And that speaks for itself. And then it was like, "Okay, now go back to your bio." 
<laughs> and you speak for it. And it was like, what? <laughs> right? But there, were, but there were other people. That's exactly what I need. No, was, and, right. And there was another guy who got up and he pontificated. And the whole audience was and like. The same thing. Like, back up. They were like, back up, bruh. We're going to need you to do that right. And so here's the thing about it. And this is what I explain. There is a never a time ever in your business where, by the way, you look fantastic I on feel camera. Really? Like, okay, you're You sweet. look so, so good. You look fantastic. So anyway, there, there you do. Oh. And we can take great pictures together too, by the we way. We do. Yeah, our pictures are always great together. So there's, there's never a time where you're going to take your business, your content, your what you present to the world. And I don't mean your speech. Right. I mean the what expertise. you talk about and why you talk about it. There's never going to be a time where you're going to be able to put that out in front of 11 or 12 or 13 people. And, I mean, we had 16 here. Mm -hmm. And they are all going to 100% lean in and listen with the idea of helping you be better. Not just get better. You have to be vulnerable enough to let us in because we're not here to hurt you. That's right. you got to be vulnerable enough to let us in because we're not here to hurt you. And so... We it's so it's 100% let us in and let me tell you when we the family are not let in that shit is personal <laughs> it's personal we're like how dare you not trust us <laughs> are you kidding me we are sleeping together for five <laughs> days it's very we're personal going to break a bread you are you are family and and literally everybody leans in and it's not and and it's never a deconstruct by any it's never a thing where we hurt it's always a thing of we lean in and we go <laughs> and we go how can this be more amazing what did you say that did not connect what about the thing that you're sharing is not clear what is it that you could be doing extra? You're never going to have people that 100% lean in on your work, your content, your business, and can honestly tell you what is amazing, what's not connecting, what is connecting. It will never happen again. When you go, and I mean, and, and people who are hearing it for the first time, and the thing is, when you go and give a speech, People are just like, it was great. No one's going to stand there and tell you. They might talk to you about mechanics or crap like that, but no one's going to tell you whether what you're talking about is so powerful that, that it resonates or doesn't resonate. And if it doesn't resonate, why it doesn't resonate. So there is a power to that. And then the rest of the time, once we get to that part, we're like, this is what needs to be better. And even though I coach everyone, I tell them, I said, here's the challenge that we're running into. I have seen it. I helped you build it. We walked hand in hand creating this. So this is now my baby as much as it is your baby. So I don't have objective eyes anymore. So now we need objective eyes from the family to really help you find your direction. And we need you to take off all the shiny armor and put down your sword. Because we're not here to do damage. We're here to build you up. And it is so powerful that quite honestly, there I've never been I've I've never seen or been to anything quite like it. And I know people talk about masterminds, but this is not that. This is so different. So anyway, this weekend, however, is now the boot camp. So we have the Rockmore Stages boot camp happening. It's two and a half days. This is where people come and they learn my formula and they learn my language. This is where they go. I get Donna's terminology. I get what she's trying to do. I understand her path. I understand her formula. I got it. Now they can make a decision. Do they want to take the formula and go do it themselves? Or do they want to come and try it through mastery? Now here's the thing. Out of the 200 people that will attend boot camps, because we have eight boot camps at the beginning of the year. Out of the 200 people that will attend boot camps, 
only 20 will actually be allowed to get into mastery. That's it. That's all we take into mastery per year. We only let 20 people through. So they start with boot camp and they move up to mastery. But it is so game changing. And I am absolutely positively in the love with my family. And I am so proud of, first of all, I'm proud of everything they do because, and I don't mean that lightly, I mean because they've really worked their ass off. The bar is set super high. It is set extremely high. And my expectation is they're going to annihilate that bar every time. But here's the other thing. I have never been so amazed or so humbled by the, by the people who come through and they allow me in and that they give me their trust. And I take that responsibility. So it's such a great responsibility, but I appreciate it more than they can imagine that they trust me. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Hey, I'll try to do some more behind the scenes, maybe give you a sneak peek into some of the stuff we do here at Rockmore Stages. We're going to be in the auditorium tomorrow morning at 9 Eastern. That's when we're going to start. And, um, and, uh, and then we're going to be going all day. So it's going to be a full two and a half days. But anyway, hey, if you guys are interested in learning more about Rockmore Stages, the next Rockmore Stages retreat happens... Um, February 21st, 22nd, 23rd. If, 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 if you get in before December 15th, you will get in before prices go up because the rates are going up. Um, and if you're running around the, about the rates, off-site where you're staying in a hotel, you're, just, you're hanging out in the mansion all day, which is fine, but you stay at a hotel because we, have, we have 12 rooms here, so not everyone can stay here. Um, off-site is $2,000. To stay on site, you do have, I, we do have to have a conversation. And to stay on site is $2,500. But it is going to go up to $2,500 and $3,000 or $3,000 and $4,000. I'll have to check. But anyway, if you're interested in staying at the mansion or if you're interested in coming to Rockmore Stages, just go to rockmorestages.com. I haven't even updated it with the new um, dates yet. So if you're interested, you gotta let me know. Period, the end. I'll talk to you later. Have a fantastic one.